What is going on guys and welcome to the channel. Now in this video, I wanna break down my experience and what to expect at UC Santa Cruz. A little background, I graduated high school back in 2018 and applied to Santa Cruz as a computer science major in the Baskin School of Engineering and I graduated in three years instead of four. By the time you guys watch this video, I would have just had my commencement ceremony. So obviously gonna be a lot to cover. This is years of my life that has gone by. I've made some notes how to cover everything, but I might have to jump around a little bit to get as much out there as I can. So starting from the beginning, when I was ending my senior year in high school, I applied to seven out of the nine UCs, all of them except for Riverside and Merced, because of, you know, prestige, but I applied to those seven. I only got to Santa Cruz. I did not realize how competitive computer science would be, and I didn't have the best grades back in high school. Me and one of my best friends got accepted as well, so we went and kind of toured the campus by ourselves on 420. And I remember when we got there, we were just like, where is everyone? It turns out everyone just went to the woods to smoke weed. And we went around, we saw the bookstore and College 9, because one of our friends recommended it to us. And we don't really know where to go because campus was so spread out and everything was covered in these beautiful redwood trees. So it was hard to kind of know that, hey, right past that hill is Crown or Merrill or over there is Oaks and all that stuff. So we were kind of a little bit clueless, but we had a good experience of seeing campus for the first time and I pretty much fell in love with it. Month into summer, we got an email from the school saying what college we wanna to wanna to be affiliated with. And those of you who don't know, there are 10 colleges on campus. They all kind of have their own theme, their own housing, their own kind of stereotypes. They're located a little bit differently. They're spread out across campus. And one of my really close friends, his sister recommended College 9 to us because it was the one she went to and are the newest colleges. So they're very modern. They're also located in a good location right next to Science Hill, which I had a lot of my classes for engineering. They have a really nice dining hall that's open on weekends and open late. So other colleges, let's say Stevenson, for example, they had to have the jockey gym dude stereotype because it's close to the gym. They also have a great dining hall that's open late and on weekends versus, you know, Merrill College, which is kind of seen as, you know, where like the gay kids go because we're like, the, it's very LGBTQ friendly. And then you you have like Oaks, all the African-American kids go. You have Rachel Carson with the volleyball chicks and they kind of have their own little theme, which uh, it does kind of fit the stereotypes. For College 9's International and Global Perspectives, every college does take a class that's usually one quarter, although some of them might have two quarter classes where you kind of cover the theme of the college. And I'll touch more about that in a minute. But I ranked my choice College 9, College 10, Stevenson, Cowell, and then I don't know what the last one was. Then I found out after a few weeks that me and my friend, neither of us got into College 9, we both got put into Stevenson. So I appealed to the college and I said, you know, I just really want to be close to the prayer hall, it's so important to me. And I don't know where the prayer hall is on campus. I don't even know if we have one, to be honest, but I don't think they knew either. So they accepted my appeal and my friends appeal and we both got into college nine. Then about halfway through summer, we had freshman orientations. Basically when all the freshmen come out, at least most of them, I think, and it was on two days. You had day one and day two. So I was on day one. Me and my friend and one of our other friends got in a car. We lived in the East Bay at the time, drove down to Santa Cruz and on orientation, we got our photo taken. And I remember I was super jet lagged. I'd literally just flown in from Chicago that morning at like 4 a.m. I had to be there at like seven. So I took like the worst ID photo ever, which was with me for the next three years. And then I also got like some, uh, like a lanyard. You got a little bit of college merch, I think some stickers or some stuff. And then you had to go to a couple like meetings. Pathway would look like for CS, kind of classes to take your freshman year. A lot of that basic introductory stuff. And we also got to tour College 9 and I saw the dorms. They were pretty nice and modern, but they were a lot smaller than I expected for three people. And then we had lunch given to us at Porter College, which was across the uh, campus. And I remember we had no idea how to get there. So we were trying to like get on like Google Maps, trying to see like, how do we get to Porter College, trying to cut through the forest. It was a mess, but orientation was pretty solid. And then after orientation, we remember we got accepted into College 9, so we had to pick out our roommates. And there's a couple different ways to meet roommates. The, I heard the biggest two was the Facebook page for incoming freshmen, and then this like UC Santa Cruz like social media app for freshmen as well. And then I went on the app, I met this really cool guy. We kind of had a couple of things in common. So me and my friend were like, yo, it's room with this guy. But it turns out that my friend, some guy he knew in high school, I think one of his like close acquaintances, he put me and him down as roommates without telling us, which they did not sit well with me because like, what's something we have to talk about before we agreed to? 
So we ended up going with him as our roommate, which I was a little upset about, but I didn't like make it too known. I'm like, you know what is what it is. So then it was officially college move in day. And that's when all the freshmen came in one week before everybody else to kind of get settled in. And I remember they started like the move in process that you get, you get an email saying what time to come in. And it started at like 9 a.m. and ended at five. I remember mine was like towards the end of the day at three o'clock. So I showed up there uh, and I remember my roommates had already been there and I told them ahead of time, hey, no matter what happens, guys, I need the bottom bunk. I do not wanna be on the top bunk. This is not for me. So I got my bottom bunk and then I also got the best desk in my opinion, which was facing the window. I, I had a really nice video I took of the room. I had a Samsung back then. I don't know if I have that video, but if I have some photos, I'll throw them up. But I got like this wardrobe closet where like the doors folded in. Not a huge deal, I just preferred one of the more open closets. And I also brought with me a mini fridge and a Brita. Mini fridge was not really worth it because we were always eating at the dining hall. The Brita definitely was worth it because we only had water fountains on the first floor of the building and ours was at the, our dorm was at the top floor. One of the other really nice things about our dorm was that it was a corner room and it had, so it had much bigger windows. It was much more spacious and it was a really, really nice spot. We are really lucky with that place. But then basically, uh, once I got all my stuff unpacked, my family, we went down to the city. We grabbed some like shawarma and then they came back up, dropped me off. They're like, all right, well, See ya. And that was pretty crazy to me because like I knew that, yo, I'm gonna be on my own in college, but this was just really weird, like actually just getting that freedom for the first time. Also, let me backtrack, I forgot to mention one thing. On freshman orientation, we also signed up for classes. And for those of you who don't understand how enrollment works, it's the more units you have, the earlier your enrollment time is. So if you're a senior, you're gonna enroll, have an enrollment time a day before the freshmen, the sophomores, and you'd priority enrollment to take which classes you want. Because obviously seniors, they need classes to graduate, they should have the first chance to grab them up. Look on your My UCSC portal when your enrollment time is, and then for your first pass, you pick up your most important two classes, and you have a maximum of 12 units at the time. So then you pick those two classes and then for your second pass, so you take obviously take your important engineering and math classes for us uh, CS majors. And then the second pass, you wanna take like some GE or something's not that important if you don't get. But that's how the enrollment works. So I had signed up for those classes uh, at orientation. And now uh, going back to just unpacking and stuff, um, once I got all my stuff done, family dropped me off. Then I was like, yo, like, what do we do? Uh, and then I got to meet a lot of the people on my floor and some of the guys, there were, a lot of, there were three guys right next to us that became like our friends for the entire year. Really awesome guys. So we were like, yo, what's good? What's up? Where are you guys from? All that cool stuff. I definitely recommend you guys socialize with as many people as possible during that first freshman week. You just wanna make a lot of friends or a lot of acquaintances. And that way, as time goes on, you kind of vibe with some people more than others. and You kind of get your friends group associated with. That is not the time to stay in your room locked up. Uh, really just go out, explore. So with those guys, we went to the dining hall a lot and uh, we were just talking, chilling. One of them was really big into stocks. He got me to stock for it. And those were just awesome guys. So for that first freshman week, there were some mandatory programs, but what it looked like was that night we had a meeting with our RA, where basically she went over kind of the rules. Obviously don't make too much noise. If you have an issue, come talk to me, uh, do this, this, and this, and all that basic stuff. Um, this was actually the first time like I'd been asked to tell someone what my pronouns were. And I just, I had no idea what to say. I'm like, uh, he, him's, they. And apparently that's, you're supposed to say like he, him, him's, or I don't even know. I'm a guy. Yeah, definitely a know what your pronouns are when you come to the school because you're gonna be asked that a lot. Meeting, then we went to the dining hall again. Dining hall, a big part of my freshman year. It's where I spent a lot of time. I mean, unlimited food, just fun with friends. Dining hall was great. And then the next day we also had uh, like a, orientation where all the cop, everyone in college nine would meet up at this, uh, I forgot what it was called, this like this place where next to the dining hall, some like room, they kind of told us like, hey, here's the best way to succeed in college, here's where your resources, here's what to know, here's the advisors, all that stuff. A lot of good introductory stuff. I remember when I walked in that auditorium, I was just so intimidated because there were so many Chinese, like Asian and smart engineering looking people. I'm like, well, yo, am I cut out for college? Didn't do that good in high school. What if I fail? What if I drop out? 
like all this pressure building on me. I didn't let it get to me too far, but definitely just pushed me to do very good my freshman year. And also there are a few guys from my high school uh, in college nine as well. Uh, one of them I kind of chilled with pretty often. So that was nice uh, just knowing a couple people and meeting some of their friends. And yeah, that first freshman week, uh, I was going pretty much, I, was go, I would go to the gym in the morning, come back to my dorm, uh, grab food with my friends, and then just do that for the rest of the day. Also played a lot of board games uh, and like card games. I had some friends from high school that are also at Porter College. So they were coming over to play games with us. I was going over to, we were all going over to them. Absolutely great time. I'm glad I socialized and met a lot of people. And because I had like two main friend groups during that first week and I ended up cutting kind of off ties with one of them. I didn't really vibe with them too much, but it was definitely good that I met a lot of people. Oh, I also got to know where the laundry and machines were and where the mail room was. Uh, there was like three laundry buildings in college nine and college 10. You just go in there, you'd like download the app uh, and just like use that to pay for your laundry. It was like 250. Uh, to wash and then two bucks to dry. And then the mail room pretty much had hours during the day. You would just, you would also get an email from the school about what your mail room like number was. So whenever you ordered stuff on Amazon or any packages, it would go to the mail room and you just put the address as like college nine with your number. And then you would just get an email from the mail room when your package was ready. You'd come down and grab it during their hour, which are pretty much just nine to five. So that was, uh, yeah, that was freshman week. So after that week, classes started and it kind of just picked up a bit. And again, cause I was so scared of failing college. I went hard on my classes. I was getting my homework done like the night it got released. I was really ahead. I was preparing like weeks ahead for midterms and finals. I went a little too overboard just studying and not having too much fun, but I think that would have been better than just the other way around. Cause I know some of my, one of my roommates, two of my roommates actually, uh, and some of my friends, like they failed like introductory classes. And I'm like, guys, like it's not that hard just to get your shit together and do well. But I guess college is a little bit distracting for some people. There was like one girl on my building who I think within the first week, she already had two write-ups for like drinking alcohol in the building, which you know is not allowed. She had one more, so she would have gotten kicked out of housing. So I don't even know how people mess up this bad, like your freshman year, but just, you know, obviously have some common sense and uh, you're in college for a reason. Also learn about TA and office hours. So basically every class you have in college is gonna have a couple teaching assistants, which are usually just masters or PhD students who kind of help you, uh, like help professor write the midterms and the finals, the quizzes, help grade homework, all that stuff. And the professors and the TA have office hours, which is basically a slot of the day from like eight to nine, three to four, five to six, some random time, usually twice a week, you can come into their office or a room and they'll help you with your homework, midterm prep, give you some good stuff to know. It is pretty useful. For that fall quarter though, I didn't go to any of that just because I'd already taken my in a derivative based calc and intro to programming at like high school through like AP calc and through AP computer science. So I was already knew all that stuff. I did also take the college nine core class. So again, like I mentioned before, every college is a class you have to take. And I remember I went to this class and it was just super liberal. Just everything about it was just like, this way's right, the right is wrong. If you're libertarian or you're conservative, you're an idiot, you've been brainwashed. Super left-wing class, the curriculum, the professor, everything about it. And I thought about like, like mentioning it was like indoctrination. But I didn't. And I'm thankful I didn't because there was really just no point. Like just the way it is, college is tends to lean very far left. A lot of these professors have never even seen the real world. They've kind of just did their bachelors, did their PhDs and became professors. A lot of really bad ideas, Marxism, communism, they kind of just came from colleges. So I'd say just keep your opinions to yourself. Conservatives definitely do not have a good rap at Santa Cruz. Uh, I was just there to get my degree in dip. I don't think it's really worth to put opinions out there which are gonna face a lot of backlash because you could face repercussions from the school just for having different opinions. But uh, I did well in that class. I got all A's my freshman fall quarter. I remember when finals came up, I studied like a month and a half for finals. So I aced all of them and I was just, again, because I was so worried about doing badly, I just kind of went too far in studying. And I also had a pretty good setup for what school looked like. I usually wake up like eight or nine o'clock, go straight to the gym, come back around like 10, 11 ish, get work done, just grind until four or five. And then for the rest from five until like 10 or 11, I was just chilling with my friends, having fun. So one of the things that happened freshman year was I noticed that for lower division engineering classes, math, computer science, 
there was a lot of kids in those classes, like three to 400. And I also, the second week of school, once classes started, we had this Oprah's Fest where all the clubs would come together and they would uh, just be like, yo, here's like everything from like robotics to like cheerleading to the frats and sororities to like boxing. I signed up for Muay Thai, which is kickboxing. And I signed up for like every single engineering, tech, robotics related club. I never went to any of them, like the robotic stuff. I did do Muay Thai, that kickboxing across the entire year for freshman year. Had a blast, met a lot of great people, but honestly, I just got too excited to sign up for stuff. I say sign up for stuff you're actually serious and passionate about. Don't just do it because you think it'll be good for like your resume or whatever. And also we had like this frat week where like for a week, all the frats were in like near the bookstore query area. And they were always trying to like poach me, like, yo, like what's going on, bro? Like, where are you from and all that stuff. I just didn't really get the frat appeal on campus. It's just, I didn't wanna pay money to be in a frat and I was pretty focused on school and I don't drink alcohol personally. So it just wasn't for me. The university is like very against frats because there was like a couple incidents. One of them was where like, as like a hazing thing, they made a kid eat a koi fish from the koi pond at Porter College. And those koi fish were like very expensive. They're like 15 grand. So once they killed the koi, like the school got really mad and they had like this huge backlash against frats. I think that frat got like permanently banned on campus. But yeah, frats were there. I did go to some, I did go to frat parties in winter quarter. I also didn't really go to classes uh, freshman year since I already taken like those same exact classes in high school, which are honestly a little more rigorous than in college. I just didn't show up to classes. I knew how to do everything. So I just do the homework. I did have a final for my core class though. We had to write like some kind of essay about like slug story, some experience in our life. And one thing I'll never forget was the professor said like, hey, whatever you do, make sure that your story is like mostly legal. Because there was one kid like two years ago who wrote a story how when he was in middle school, him and his friends would go up to like where all these homeless people were in his hometown on a hill. And they'd find these like intoxicated, drugged and homeless people and just roll them down the hill in like a, their sleeping bags and stuff. And you got a lot of trouble with the school for that. So just, I don't know, that always cracked me up. Okay, so then we had three weeks of winter break, much needed. Uh, I had a ton of fun with my friends talking about, yo, what's slow like, what's Berkeley like, what's LA like, here's what Santa Cruz is like, all that fun stuff. And then when school came back for winter, I took my next round of classes. Because I'd taken AP classes in high school, I had extra units, which gave me a better, like a more priority enrollment compared to others at the time. So I didn't really struggle with picking out classes too much, but I was taking a difficult workload. Like this is a trend, but as college goes on, your classes get more more difficult. So this was a pretty big step up for fall quarter. I was taking discrete math, writing two, and then uh, like a more advanced programming class. This is where I started going to uh, TA office hours much more often because for discrete math, especially the TAs would literally just tell you, hey guys, here's what's gonna be on the quiz exactly word for word and just write out the problems, we'd solve it. Super useful. Uh, I started using Chegg a lot as well. If you're paying like thousand dollars for college, spend an extra 15 bucks a month, get a Chegg subscription. It'll help a lot for homework and solving those like difficult problems. I would say though, just be very careful when you're doing any sort of like collaboration or Chegg or any kind of online searching in college because it is a huge deal if you like don't cite a source in an essay or something like that. And definitely read the syllabus your professor will give you because some professors are like, oh yeah, you wanna collaborate with someone perfectly cool, don't even mention it. Some people will say you have to write their name, what part you collaborated with on this and that. Some will say you can't use online sources, some will say you can, and every professor expects you to have like their syllabus memorized. So definitely read the plagiarism section, the cheating section on the syllabus because you do not want to screw around with that stuff in college. Uh, for CS, also for any programming assignment, most professors will run what you turn in through MOS, which stands for Measure of Software Similarity. Program out of Stanford, which will compare your code with everyone else's in the classes or any base code the professor gave you and check for any similarities that are definitely like cheating. You changing variable names, switching the for loop to a while loop. I'll cover that more in a later video I'm planning on making, but just know like at the very least, write a comment of who you worked with, any online research you got code from, all that stuff, because that will save you because academic consequences for cheating are severe, guys. Like you do not wanna pay 60K for school and then boom, get expelled or suspended. Like it is not worth it. Read, 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 read the plagiarism academic integrity section of the syllabus. 
always write down who you worked with any site you visited online and you'll be in good hands. I also went to two parties over winter quarter. I didn't really enjoy them too much because it's I don't drink alcohol personally and they were with like one of them was like with an Indian frat on campus and I can't remember what the other one was with but good experience but really just not for me. And it also rained a ton winter quarter and I was not prepared for that. So bring an umbrella to school because better to be safe than sorry. And we also had the naked run, which is basically this thing on campus where whenever it rains from like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at eight o'clock at night, everyone at Porter College just gets completely naked or in their underwear. They run around the college and they go from Porter down to the gym at Opers, which is the uh, recreation center. And they just pick up people on the way and there's so, it's this huge thing. I don't even know how it started, but essentially I'm boxing at night and then with uh, the guys for the Muay Thai club. And then I just hear these like blaring alarms go off and I go and look out the window with these guys and there's like 300 just fully naked or half naked people just running towards the pool. They're jumping over the fence and jumping into the pool. And I was like, what is going on? And yeah, that's, uh, that's the naked run. Uh, pretty crazy experience. I may or may not have joined in, but uh, I don't know why that's a thing. I know that one of my friends at Irvine said they do it there as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy, but uh, it was interesting. I also started going to the library more. I feel like fall quarter, I was kind of in my room studying. It was, I think it's better just to go in a library setting. You see more people there. You're kind of in focus mode. And for us CS, yes, for engineering students, we have the s &E library. Uh, there's also a McHenry, which is pretty nice, but I mostly went to s and &E because again, it was close to College 9 in Science Hill near my classes. And I also went to a school dance that was happening at Merrill College. I really didn't want to go, but my friends were like, yo, it'll be fun. It was, so I went to Merrill at the dance, one of the best nights of my life. Had a ton of fun with my friends and everyone. So definitely, again, as I mentioned, get out of your comfort zone, try new things. One last thing that happened in winter quarter was I started butting heads with my my roommates, my really close friend that I mentioned. We wanted to room together, but we were very clearly polar opposites. Like I wake up early, go to bed early. I like hanging out with my friends, going out to the room. He was one of those like really late night guys, likes playing like loud video games and stuff with his friends. And it just would not work out. So I was pretty mad. I'm like, yo bro, it's nine o'clock. We had a, or 10 o'clock, we had a room. Everyone, everyone, all our friends gonna leave the room at 10. He's like, bro, like I'm trying this and that. And like, we used to argue about like, yo, like, who took my paper plate, who took this or that, and like a lot of dumb stuff, but definitely be aware of who you're rooming with. I know you wanna room with your best friends, but if you guys are on like extreme opposites or just not really that compatible, don't think of it a bad thing to be like, yo, I wanna room with somebody else. And yeah, winter quarter again, finished out with a banger, all A's, GPA was looking good. And we had one week for spring break and I just went home, uh, chilled, and then I came back for spring quarter. Now spring quarter was def double the difficulty of winter quarter. I was taking integral calc, which was just so difficult. Cause it wasn't even like the AP calc integral calc, which is like, yo, integrate this stuff. It's like, here's a word problem of like a sphere filling up with water, driving down the road. And what ratio of speed is the water filling up with to get to 75% of the sphere? Assuming the whole, it was just add these a complete word problems. Extremely difficult, but that's when TA office hours came in super handy. There was one TA especially who would just be like, yo, like here's a 95% chance the professor will ask these kinds of questions, let's review them. And those would always show up on the midterms and the finals. So go to TA office hours. If it's if you like it, keep going. If it's a waste of time, don't go, but definitely start the quarter by going there because it might come in super handy later on. I was thinking AMS 10, which was like the typical like college class where literally everyone fails the fi like the midterm and the final. And there's this fat 30, 40% curve. That was, AMS 10 was like, yeah, it was like linear algebra, a lot of those matrices, like transpose it, move it around. Uh, it actually did, did come in handy later on, but it was also just a very difficult class as well. Oh yeah, and then I finally took my first online class spring quarter. It was some like rocks class about where you learn about like geography and like rocks. And again, I learned that online classes are super easy. If you have an option between an online or in-person, take the online, it's always much easier. I was sort of looking for internships over the summer to get, you know, a full-time job after college. You should get internships throughout the year. And I definitely butchered that experience because I was just like, oh, just apply to a couple places on LinkedIn, get these internships, it's Apple, Twitter, they're all gonna roll up to me and I'm gonna easily just work there. But 
No, I did not realize how competitive these internships were and just how much I didn't know as a freshman. One thing I did do was take community college classes over the summer. I talked with my counselor about this and I remember she told me like, yo, do not take more than three. These classes are super difficult. And I signed up for three obviously, but these were the easiest classes I ever took that summer. They're just, they, uh, you, they, you don't get them, they don't affect your GPA, you either get a pass fail, but it gives you those credits you need. You have to take these classes regardless uh, at schools, why not just take them at community college where they're much cheaper and much easier. I took those three, I honestly should have taken like 10 because I was working a full-time job that summer and those classes were super easy, but I'll cover a little bit more about that in a second. For the rest of spring quarter, I went to some cool events like Diwali night, color festival, met a lot of cool people. And also in terms of transportation, because I lived in the East Bay, I thought it'd be pretty difficult to like get up there. I'd have to go and I have to take like the 34 or some bus from Santa Cruz to San Jose, then go to the Deer Dawn station and take the ACE train from San Jose to Dublin and get a ride home. It's actually not the worst way to get home for me, but uh, they have this group share, this ride share app for UCSC students on Facebook. That was really, really convenient. People would be like, yo, I'm heading up to East Bay. I'm heading up to here, heading up to there. Anyone need a drop off? Anyone need this? It's five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, super straightforward. That was great because I normally went back home once every three weeks. Just get, just get a haircut, to be honest. Like, family was cool, but I just needed a haircut. Uh, the one thing I did mess up was I filled out my FAFSA for next year very late. Like, you're supposed to submit it like as early as possible. I think it comes out like, I don't even know, but it, uh, but it, I submitted it right towards the end. So the next year I got screwed over bad for financial aid. I lost a lot of money. So big thing, I made a video on this as well on my channel about like how to maximize your FAFSA because I made that mistake, is definitely fill out your FAFSA ASAP so you get the most financial aid possible. By the time I filled it out, I probably just ran out of aid and I didn't get anything, which screwed me over pretty bad sophomore year. And also I'm looking for housing that spring for next year. You really wanna be on top of housing because in Santa Cruz County, housing is extremely expensive and I really want an on-campus apartment. On-campus apartments are pretty hard to come by. A lot of demand, low supply, Basically what happens is based on a point-based system, okay? So first of all, everyone in your group has to have priority housing. For your first two years at school, you are guaranteed uh, priority housing, uh, which means you have a much higher chance of getting into on-campus apartments, on-campus dorms. They'll try to fit you in somewhere on campus the best they can. If you're a junior or sophomore, like, or junior or senior, like you're on your own, the universe doesn't care about you. So everyone in my group had priority housing. We were all sophomores. One of us was a junior, but he had uh, like some EOP status. And then it's based on this point-based system. If you work at the school's dining hall or the mail room, you get an extra point. One way to get points was to become college guides. So remember I told you about freshman year of freshman orientation, not orientation, freshman week when the first week of camp school when only freshmen show up, a lot of college guys would be like directing traffic, giving us like programs and talking to us and all that good stuff. So four people in my group signed up to be college guys and I was one of them. And then I uh, just canceled in the middle of summer. I was like, yo, I'm working. I really don't want to be a college guide. I said it nicely, of course, but we got those points and we got that on-campus apartment, which was really sweet my sophomore year. I'll cover that in a minute. But yeah, spring quarter, definitely had some rough finals. I think this is like, like my first B or whatever. Not gonna be a big deal, but it was definitely pretty challenging. But yeah, I also got into like serious beef with my roommates because we were just so different about when I wake up, all that stuff I mentioned earlier. So that group I was with for housing for next year, neither of them were in it. It was just me and some other guys I met. Yeah, and the last thing is at the end of the year, because a lot of these uh, seniors or grad students are moving out to other states or leaving, you can get amazing deals on stuff like couches, TVs, mini fridges, uh, anything you can think of like, in a, and that'd be in an apartment. So I scored like a really nice like TV for just like 10 bucks and uh, that was pretty sweet. I still have that to this day, it's at my family's house. So literally just look on like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, there'll be a lot of dope deals of stuff you can bring into your dorm. Finals were hard, again, that fat curve thing where by my AMS class, where literally I got like a 40% on the final and it got bumped up to like a 84. I'm not complaining, uh, but yeah, classes definitely do pick up in difficulty, so have a lot of fun your fall and winter quarter. But that was essentially my first year of college. Again, that just like moved, packed my stuff, moved out at the end of the year. And uh, okay, so summer from freshman to sophomore year, I was working a front end job and I also started this YouTube channel which I did not expect to grow to where it is today. We're thankful to all you guys. Oh, be sure to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to just liking this video. But uh, when school started back up 
in the fall, I moved into that on-campus apartment. And one thing I told you guys about with my, so basically it was six people in this apartment. I have an apartment tour video up on my channel as well. It was two triples and then we shared like this hallway, bathroom, shower, living room, uh, and kitchen. And I told these, my two roommates, like, I want the bottom bunk. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, cool, 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 but we got you, you got the bottom bunk. I show up there and he took the bottom bunk and I was mad. I'm like, yo, I wasn't actually that mad because like, these are my roommates and I'm cool with them, but uh, I'm like, yo, I want the bottom bunk. And I had this like top bunk where like, there was no bunk underneath it. It was like the top bunk and you put like the desk underneath it. So I called up like the maintenance officers in the school. I'm like, yo, I have like sleep seizures. And sometimes I might, where I might like fall off the bunk. So they brought it down to like a bottom bunk, which I thought was really awesome. Shout out to those guys. And then I just got packed in, moved my stuff. I love that apartment. Again, on the fourth floor. Always go to higher up apartments, guys. It's better not to have 20 people above you. But in terms of classes, I was taking multivariable calc, the hardest math class I've ever taken especially with the same professor for integral calc. So again, every question was like a damn word problem. Like, oh, like if the tree is falling at a steady pace of four meters per second and you're standing like this far back and you only know that the gravitation, oh, it was like, oh my God. I don't know why it was just so difficult. Yeah, I had that class. I just had CSC 101, which is the bread and butter for CS students. It covers uh, algorithms and data structures. It is more theoretical. Um, you, if you guys are CS majors, you'll learn that all this theoretical stuff, uh, it goes straight in the garbage when you apply for real jobs. But definitely the bread and butter, learn, learn a lot of great stuff in that class. And then I took some GE probably. This was the quarter though, when I failed. I failed two midterms. I remember for CSC 101, I went to that midterm feeling good. Boom, failed. The next day for my multivariable calc, I completely bombed that midterm as well, got an F. And I think I was on such an ego boost from freshman year. I'm like, yo, I got this, I'm feeling good that I just tanked those two midterms. I did work hard the rest of the quarter, got my grades up, ended with I think Bs in both of those classes, but uh, don't fail your midterms, be humble, and just remember to study ahead of time because a lot of those questions like I had seen and like, practice reviews and I'm like, ah, you know what, I don't need it, whatever. I started skipping those TA office hours. Don't wanna fail midterms. I also went to, I think, two parties as well on the Dager. Dager's probably the most useless thing of literally just everyone's just drinking and I don't drink. I don't know why I keep going to these parties, honestly. I dragged into it with my friends. And then I also started my Amazon Prime addiction that quarter because, you know, they offer six months of free Amazon Prime for students. Having like, it's a hassle to get off campus if you don't have a car. And I did not want to go all the way down to like the city just to, I don't know, some lotion or some uh, deodorant or some random like daily essential stuff. So I think it shipped you on Amazon was super convenient. And to this day, I'm still addicted to Amazon. So good marketing on them. A lot of you guys think that Santa Cruz is like in the city at the beach. It's really nice to take the bus to go down to the beach. It's really just in the forest close to the edge of the ocean. It's not really like, I wouldn't say it's like a beach, a little bit too far from the beach to call it like a beach campus. I also learned that quarter that because of the AP classes I taken in high school, I took eight AP classes, which I don't think you should take any. I think they're a complete waste of time. Because those classes I took and I took the tests, got the credits and passed those. Because of the classes I took over the summer, I was like, yo, I can actually graduate in three years instead of four and save a ton of money. People recommend you to take no more than like two CS classes or two or one CS, one math class a quarter, but I stepped that up later to make this deadline, which was definitely pretty difficult, but it was like, yo, like, I can actually do this. And I also went to my second concert ever. It was at the Catalyst, just downtown. Amazing spot. I saw Blueface. I know, make jokes, but it was honestly my favorite concert I've ever been to. I've been to like four now. Cause he just had this amazing, like childish energy. Crazy fight broke out at the end. Um, uh, gunshots, all that crazy stuff. But I had a blast there. And I also went to this, there's also this amazing quesadilla spot, a taco spot downtown called Los Pericos. And honestly, it was like pretty affordable too. Like the giant quesadilla was huge. It, could, like, it was like two whole meals. I went there like every other week probably just with my friends. Remember we were downtown, amazing spot. Definitely check out Los Pericos. Go to the Catalyst, they have a ton of events, especially now that stuff's open. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Let's see what else happened. Uh, yeah, there was some big YouTuber that kept, kept coming to campus who was like giving away like free customized AirPods and iPhones. I kept wanting to run into this guy, but I never saw CZH or something on YouTube. If I find him, I'll uh, post him up here. That quarter I also posted my first ever day in life at UCSV vlog, which changed the trajectory of my YouTube channel, which got a lot of love from you guys. I appreciate that. And I also started waking up at 6 a.m., which became a state of habit with me from this day because 
because the gym on campus is very small and I hate having to wait for equipment or spend extra time there because everything's so busy. So we're waking up at 6 a.m. to beat the gym rush and to have that stayed with me to this day. And I also at this point started skipping classes entirely. Professors aren't the best at explaining concept. I think most of the time the TAs are better because you have multiple TAs, you can go to whichever one you think is the best. And you have so many online resources for math and CS that some professors are just not worth an hour and a half lecture when you can just go and rather learn the entire content in 15 minutes on YouTube. We have fall quarter. Didn't do that good because I had failed those two midterms, but I finished with like two Bs and an A, which is A, not bad. Uh, GPA was still high. And then I had that three week winter break and then came winter quarter, which I loved it, but it was a complete hellhole because it just, you had the strikes going on. You had the campus shutdowns, you had power outages. You had just everything that could have gone wrong, went wrong. But also just my favorite quarter. So essentially I go there, winter quarter starts, and this is huge talk about this, uh, COLA, this cost of living adjustment, because they said that non-STEM TAs, so humanities, those kids, they, they weren't getting paid enough. And all these kids are like low-key socialists. That's what they like indoctrinate them with at school. They're like, oh, we want to be paid this much or that much. And I personally just didn't care. Like I just, there's a lot of activism that happens on campus and I just do not care. Like I'm just there to get my degree in dip, but it became an issue because they would shut off campus. Remember, there's two entrances to campus, one on high street and one north of campus. And they would just get on that crosswalk and block it off. And that way essentially that like, the buses were like, cause the bus uh, system already striked before. So they were like supporting the campus protest. So there was no buses on campus whatsoever. And I, don't, I didn't cover this yet, my bad. Uh, basically campus is pretty spread out. It's not like huge, but it's like very spread out. So buses are a great way to get around because walking from like college nine to Porter could take like 35 minutes or Oaks would take like 40. It's just a very long time to walk. So sometimes the buses are much better. So there was no bus on campus, impossible to get anywhere like long distance. The professors couldn't have classes. They couldn't get their cars to campus. TAs were canceling and it just was a hassle. I was really mad because I'm here to get my education. So either I better be getting a refund or I want what I paid for. But that just didn't happen. That was, I was not a fan of that. There's a class that I was taking computer graphics. Loved that class, loved the professor. That was the one professor I think I vibed with more than anyone else. I actually kept in touch with him like once or twice for the next like rendering and graphics class I took. Love that guy, Professor Davis. If you have him for any graphics class, I recommend you take him. He's not like an easy A, but you'll learn a lot and have a ton of fun. He has really realistic, awesome projects. Taking, oh, CSC 12, which is like the big weeder class for CS and CE students. Kids make the mistake of taking CE 12 their freshman year and just completely fail it. I would say like, it's not like impossible. It was definitely challenging, but it wasn't something crazy. And the last one I was taking was comparative programming languages. So as I mentioned, three CS classes, two of them were upper divs. Definitely not something I'd recommend you guys to take, but again, I was on the accelerated path where I really wanted to graduate in three years and I was very focused on school. So again, wake up at 6 a.m., straight to the library, grind, 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 grind till five o'clock. I go to office hours as well if they were uh, offered to get help. Uh, and maybe go to a class was mandatory, but then after five o'clock, I was just chilling. Maybe like, no, that quarter was more like six or seven. I was just working because it was a grind. But you compare their programming languages, you had to learn like seven new programming languages within like a week of each, two weeks of each other. And that was pretty difficult. Uh, definitely a very heavy course load. At that point in time, I wasn't really going out too much, except for Los Pericos. But I just was not having a lot of fun on campus. A lot of my other friends who were like in humanities, they're like, yeah, I just went and took a picnic and I took a nap today. And then I did a little bit of homework and then I went home and played video games. And it's like, no, I, I would, I, would, I could never do that. I, if I wasted like four hours in a day, I would feel so guilty for the rest of the week. Definitely not an option when I was taking a workload that heavy, uh, especially as an engineering student. But yeah, on top of those striking, so nobody, the buses couldn't get in, a lot of classes had to go online uh, so they could like be, or they just got completely canceled. Uh, there was also a bunch of campus power outages and uh, the, the protesters, they'd also go into dining halls and just make a lot of noise and be super annoying. And they'd also go into like people's like, midterms and just completely disrupt the class and make a lot of noise and stuff. And then the pandemic hits and it's just, wow. Is there any worse way to just ruin someone's college experience? I don't think so. Week and a half from finals, we got a mandate from the school saying that their spring quarter will be completely online. And that was just devastating to me. Yeah, that week before finals happened, we packed all my stuff from my apartment and went home. 
And that was like really heartbreaking and stuff because a lot of stuff I was like doing on campus, a lot of my, let's say goodbye to my friends, a lot of them were graduating, I wouldn't see them. Yes, I remember when I went home, I was like pretty devastated, I was like in my head, so I did very poorly on my finals. Uh, I still got an A in computer graphics. I got like a B minus in CE12. I bombed that final. Like thankfully I was grinding throughout the entire year, so my, it was like my grade was like high. But yeah, bombed that final. And luckily, like a lot of professors make this deal saying you have to pass every aspect of the class, the homework, the midterm, the final uh, projects, all that stuff. C12 didn't have that policy. So even though I failed the final, I was still able to pass the class. And compared to programming languages, uh, I, got an, I luckily got an A in that class. And then honestly, from spring quarter to winter quarter of next year, it was all just a blur for me with everything going on. I, as much as I want to hate the pandemic everything that happened, I did save a lot of money on rent and I was able to graduate with no student loans at all, which is a huge goal of mine and that would not have been possible had there not been a worldwide pandemic. Uh, so as much as it sucked, it did help me a lot in that sense and I was able to just stay focused on school because I mentioned taking three upper division CS classes for the rest of the year was extremely difficult. So spring quarter, I was taking architecture, I was taking um, operating systems, I think, and uh, some other class. This was the rendering class I took. I did was able to make some side projects on my own to put on my resume. I was just so focused on, and it was just such a grind. I really wouldn't recommend taking those three, uh, graduating in three years, unless you've like planned it out since freshman year to give yourself a reasonable workload. But yeah, spring quarter, I did decent. Uh, so over the summer, I was interning at AMD on the server performance team, made a bunch of videos on that. I got the internship extended into the fall. And fall quarter was just extremely, like I had no time whatsoever to do anything except school and internship. I literally just wake up, do the internship like for eight hours. And then I'd maybe during my lunch break, I'd watch a lecture. Then I just watch the other lectures, do all my homework from like, five to 10 and go to bed and did that for a month straight. I did take fall quarter. I took intro to algorithms, which is definitely a class I recommend because when you start applying for full-time jobs, uh, you'll need that algorithm skills, the big O for time and space complexity and all that other stuff. Good class to have. I'm glad to get fall quarter, but I was, cause I started applying for jobs in winter quarter. And once I got that internship, I just did not care about my GPA whatsoever. Started getting C's and B's in classes, didn't care, had the internship. Winter quarter, I took another three pretty heavy classes. I think I took OS that class actually. Uh, AI and something else, who even cares? But again, very difficult. I started applying for full-time jobs and that's a whole other video I'm gonna make about how to get a job after college as an engineering or CS student looking for software engineering roles. My own, my family we used to live with our grandmother, but then because we got another, we moved to Mountain House. My grandmother was with my uncle. So because she wasn't in the house, I was able to go out more often and not be paranoid or bring something back home. I remember I was also had to take, I had, this was one GE I had to take. So I was taking those two class, I was taking three CS classes and one more two unit class. There's also like some super left wing political class. Like here's why guns are bad. Here's why big government's good. Here's why we should all be socialist, all that crap. Uh, again, I didn't put up a frost with it. I'm like, yeah, go Bernie, whatever I have to say to get the A or just do well. Started applying to jobs, um, got some, I was, I think I intern. I was uh, interviewing with some companies and then winter quarter wrapped up. And then I planned the one nice thing I planned it so that spring quarter, which I'm just finished now. I think that's the last project to turn in tomorrow. Uh, spring quarter, I took the easiest class. So I had to take, I'm just taking, um, I was taking like technical writing, which is like how to write resumes, documentation, project planning, all that good stuff. And then I was also, I'm also taking a, a front end programming class using a CSS, HTML, all that stuff. So I gotta wrap up this video pretty soon, guys. Um, I just moved to a new apartment, got a lot of stuff I gotta do. But yeah, essentially just, I stopped picking up my GPAs because I'm getting, I'm, got a software engineering job. Why do I care about how to do front end stuff? Whatever, gonna make you a well-rounded student. Not that many classes were very useful, maybe six of them max, which are useful towards my full-time uh, job after college in software engineering. Uh, but yeah, some big mistakes, some things I could have done differently was if I hadn't taken from four years to three years, I definitely say do some research opportunities on campus, get to know professors well, because most of these classes are massive, at least a hundred kids. But anyway, yeah, that's my college experience. I definitely missed a few things I wanted to mention to you guys. Uh, my freshman year, winter quarter, I took writing too. People like hyped up writing too, like, oh my God, it's so scary, one essay a week. It's pretty easy. I definitely love that class uh, called the Critique of Everyday Life. Professor helped me with writing some of my scholarships because I did get a $10,000 scholarship from Clorox, which took me two tries to get 
some mistakes I didn't make in college, even though I was pretty outgoing, I should have definitely met more people, made more connections, because I would have helped with getting new jobs and meeting new people. Definitely college is not the time to be shy. You can also just completely reinvent yourself. In high school, I was more of a little bit like a class clown. College, I was, people had a lot of respect in me. That's one thing I noticed was because of the way I carried myself and the way I acted, I was so focused on school. And yeah, it does suck that my college experience went from really like from four to three years, then from like one and a half actually on campus, but that is what it is. I had an amazing time at UC Santa Cruz, despite the many, many cons of the school. Graduating, if I graduate, yeah, I'm graduating by the time you guys are watching this video, I'll throw up some like graduation picks if I have any. Uh, if you guys wanna like reach out to me on like LinkedIn or something, definitely do that. Subscribe and if you, uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. If there's anything I missed, if you guys have any Illumini watching this, I want to put on any comments for these incoming freshmen, drop them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I only got to run out right now, but I will see you guys next week for the next video.